I'll begin by saying that Spider-Man No Way Home was probably the best example of the multiverse concept in science fiction, and it's a solid film in its own right, and the best of the MCU's fourth phase. That being said, I believe the multiverse, as used in such films, is ultimately just a gimmicky plot device born out of creative fatigue and filmmakers running out of new ideas. For example, Tom Holland, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man are ultimately completely disconnected and separate interpretations of the character. They're different lore, they are closed universes, a different canon and unrelated continuity to each other. Having them meet on screen would be impossible and impractical without some very crazy explanation. The multiverse as a plot device is that crazy explanation. It's the only way of getting the three Spider-Men on screen at the same time because it's basically a MacGuffin or contrived excuse for making the crossover possible. I mean, no one would ever expect Sean Connery's James Bond to bump into Roger Moore's James Bond, or Pierce Brosnan or Daniel Craig to team up in a multi-007 story. I know that James Bond isn't science fiction, but you get my point. The recasting of the character was done at the production level, and not at the story level, after all. So until the multiverse plot device concept was hinted at some years ago, no one would expect something so ridiculous as Sam Raimi's Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire to team up with Garfield or Holland's iterations of Spider-Man. These different interpretations of the character were never designed to meet when they were first produced, but the multiverse essentially made it possible for these disconnected adaptations to share screen time together. The multiverse plot device is currently a bit of a novelty and has been used to relatively good effect with Marvel's What If, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, and the aforementioned Spider-Man No Way Home. But there's no denying that the sudden usage of the multiverse plot device in science fiction is a bit of a trend at present. And I think the novelty will eventually wear off, because once it's been done a few times, it starts to get a little bit tiresome. I think the emergence of the multiverse plot point is perhaps a sign of the times in modern Hollywood. We're actually long past the point where story, content, originality, creativity or quality of writing really matters. The superhero genre is so oversaturated and has already explored every major and minor character and produced all of the galaxy-shattering moments and epic battles imaginable that now all that's left is to essentially deconstruct the genre itself. However, we're now living in a time where even the previous firewall that existed between the X-Men and the MCU is being broken down in preparation for yet another gimmicky crossover, so anything has become possible. And it hasn't just been Marvel that's been doing this recently. DC's Arrowverse crossover event on the CW called Crisis on Infinite Earths saw loads of mashups, from Tom Welling and Erica Jurance's versions of Clark Kent and Lois Lane respectively from the TV series Smallville, meeting Tyler Hecklin's version of Clark Kent and John Cryer's version of Lex Luthor, to Ezra Miller's version of The Flash meeting Grant Gustin's version of The Flash, to Brandon Ruth's version of Superman meeting Tyler Hecklin's version of Superman, and many, many more such crossovers besides. Another element to consider with these kinds of multiverse crossover mashups is that they also serve as an opportunity to tap into audience nostalgia. And we know that from Hollywood's obsession in recent years with sequels, prequels, and reboots, that nostalgia is a powerful marketing device and a very profitable one. Some people will pay to see Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield's respective versions of Spider-Man alongside Tom Holland's version out of pure nostalgia for the Maguire and Garfield films. Of course, Hollywood blockbusters are all about making money, I understand that completely, but coming up with contrived, gimmicky plot reasons for crossing over different actors who played the same character in the past, it just feels like a desperate attempt to milk the franchise. It's like the thinking was, well, there's nothing left to do. I mean, we've done everything else, so we might as well do this and see what happens. What's next? Get all of the Batmans together? Let's have Michael Keaton's Batman meet Val Kilmer's Batman and George Clooney's Batman and Christian Bale's Batman and Ben Affleck's Batman. <laughs> Let's put them all together and see what happens. Nothing would surprise me. And you know, I believe that if a deal could ever be brokered to one day have a DC and Marvel mega crossover film you can be sure it would happen no matter how unlikely it currently seems. Imagine Bruce Wayne meeting Tony Stark. 
Also, if the Millennium Falcon ever meets the Starship Enterprise because of some tear in the fabric of the space-time continuum, don't say I didn't warn you. Also, notice that the multiverse plot device always seems to work in effectively the same way. Something like, the universe is breaking down, reality is being ripped apart, the boundaries between dimensions are collapsing, etc. Basically, audiences would never previously have accepted the possibility of, for example, a crossover between different Spider-Man or Superman productions unless there was some kind of crazy, wacky MacGuffin that made it all possible. So whether it's DC or Marvel, the multiverse alternate reality plot device requires the creation of absolute chaos in the story in order to justify the crossover of different superhero productions. Now there is a malevolent force at work, one driven by a singular goal, the destruction of all there is. We tamper with the stability of space-time. The multiverse is a concept about which we know frighteningly little. It's becoming a bit of a trope now. The universe is falling apart, and so, alternate reality versions of the same superheroes all have to unite together to help restore the integrity of the universe before all of space and time collapse, or some other such variation of that. The entire universe needs you. Across space and time exist seven heroes who can save the multiverse. So, as I've said, in recent years, we've seen Hollywood milk cash cow franchises with sequels, prequels, and reboots. Now you can add to that list a new type of genre all of its own, the multiverse mashup, allowing for a meta, self-aware kind of crossover event that basically absorbs previously unrelated incarnations of a popular franchise for a ratings or box office stunt. That's what this current obsession with multiverse crossover events feels like, a cheap, gimmicky trick, and perhaps one of the last remaining golden goose eggs to be squeezed from a popular franchise that's long past its sell-by date. But there's something else that bothers me about the multiverse concept, and that's something the Critical Drinker said in my live chat the other day. The multiverse really means that there's no real consequences to anything. Even character deaths almost mean nothing, because you can always just bring back the dead character by plucking them out of an alternate reality thanks to the multiverse plot device which ultimately cheapens a character's death or, indeed, their heroic sacrifice. I think we might be at the beginning of a quiet admission by Hollywood that wokeness is not working and some creative course correction is needed very soon. The political stuff has to be dropped because audiences have had enough of it. So, when studios start to get desperate, perhaps, desperate to win back the fans, I wouldn't be surprised if the multiverse is used as the magical abracadabra deus ex machina to bring back superheroes who have been retired some years ago, like, for example, Chris Evans' Captain America or Robert Downey Jr.'s Tony Stark. I'm still banking on their return to rescue the MCU in the coming years. So, what do you think of the multiverse concept? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Are you indifferent to it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.